speaking of Red Wing, let's kind of start there. You know, yeah. I know that I know that was your sister platoon out there. Yeah, as our task unit. So let's kind of talk about, you know, where were you? You know, it's kind of interesting how you found out. And, and I'd like to just kind of start right there. Sure. I'll go back. Um, you know, we were tra training up for two years on workup and close to deployment. I don't know if it was a month or two months out. And again, you know, my recollection of a lot of things, you know, 13 years of the teams, they all went into one year. You yeah. know, I, so so bear with me if I, if I get some of these facts wrong. But it was a month or two before deployment. One platoon was going to deploy directly to Afghanistan, and the other platoon was going to Germany. And then after three months, we were going to switch. So the platoon that went to Germany goes to Afghanistan. Platoon that is in Afghanistan goes to Germany. Well, of course, we wanted to go to war first. And it was very busy at the time. It was 2005. Um, there was a lot going on. And... Why we wanted to go first was because if we got to go to Afghanistan first and fight, then we got to go back to Germany and just drink and fuck off for three months, right? Like that was the yeah. idea and that would have been great. The platoon that goes to Germany knew that we had to prepare to go to Afghanistan because we couldn't get like drunk and fat and not train and then end up in the middle of a war zone, right? Yeah. So it was kind of like, it sucked, you know, if you were that... <laughs> platoon so we fl we flip a coin and we lost so our platoon lost and we went to germany and you know the other platoon went to afghanistan you know and, and the rest is kind of history there um you know off a simple coin toss so i you know i get i get some goosebumps Damn. thinking about it that you know who knows you know who knows what would have happened i don't know how many people know about that coin toss um so they went to afghanistan we went to germany it no shit was a it was literally a coin toss it's a fucking Somebody coin toss. flipped a coin yeah wow clipped it flipped a coin in the team room damn yeah heads i win tells you lose right yeah so we went to germany trained and drank um got to see the tour de france that was cool um but red wings so you know middle of the night I don't know how it happened. I think it was either I got a phone call or we found out helicopter got, you know, went down. And, um, you know, you kind of wake up and start knocking on other guys' do doors. You know, we're in, we're, in, we're in our barracks in Germany and nobody really knows what's going on. And, you know, guys start panicking a little bit. We can't get a hold of anybody. We don't know who's in the helicopter. We, we don't know anything. As the night, we stayed up all night. As the night went on, we couldn't get any intel. Like here we are, we're, we're a SEAL platoon in Germany. It's our sister platoon that we just worked up with for two years. All our best friends are there. We have no idea what's going on. You're only thinking the worst, of course. Um, you know, you think with some modern technology, we'd at least know what's going on. We start getting intel back from Virginia Beach from our freaking wives that yeah. are telling us, hey, so-and-so just had a car pull up with you know seals in uniform to tell you know to tell the spouse that their husband got killed and so we'd find out you know jeff taylor or you know jacques fontan or you know eric christensen and we're like holy fuck holy fuck you know um but again we're finding this stuff back from our women in virginia beach like just the whole system at the time was was screwed up yeah and to no fault of anyone's i mean I mean, everybody we worked with, I mean, I, I always looked up to, you know, there's, there's always a few bad apples, but I think the majority of team guys are there for the right reasons and they they make the right calls when, when, when the time is right. And we just never lost that many people at one time, right? This was like, this was just new for the community since probably, you know, Vietnam era SEALs. And so I think there was a, you know, it was just a bit of panic, a bit of lessons learned, um, and all types of shit. So, so we went through that night and the next day of trying to figure out, you know, who's alive, who's dead, you know, what else happened. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a little foggy on if we found, if, uh, if we knew that, that, you know, Marcus was alive, was anybody else alive? Um, 
So we, we still didn't really know really what was going on. And it took like a week to figure out. How fast did your how fast did you guys start getting intel from your wives? Within a couple hours. That fast? Within a couple hours, because I think if you know, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, it definitely was the next day. Because like I said, this was nighttime. Yeah. Definitely was the next day. Um and you know, we didn't know what to do. Like all we wanted to do was go over there and fight. We're like, we want to get on a plane now and go. Like that, like that's what we want to do. Like we need to go support them. Like we need to like let's let's go. They, we we stayed for a little while, so we wound up staying a few days, and we wound up just drinking really hard. You know, super drunk, telling stories. Um, you know, we were just we didn't know what to do. We didn't know how to react. Some guys in the platoon were so, um, you know, they were so I want to say dumbfounded, but like affected that they were just, you know, depressed and didn't talk. And, you know, it was just, it was just confusion for everybody. Like we never had lost before. Yeah. You know, we never had lost before. And it was, it was actually the first time where I thought like, we're not Superman. Like we're really not. And I thought I was, I really thought I was at that time. I thought there's no way I can get hurt. There's no chance. Like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm built of body armor. Yeah. And uh, it was the first time I got a little, like, I don't want to say scared, but a little anxious. It say, got real. This is real. This is exactly it, Sean. You, you said it. It's the first time it got real. And uh, and that's cool. That's it. I mean, we signed up for that. It was, it was no problem. Um, so you wind up um, trying to think of the timeline. think Marcus, they flew Marcus in, you know, just kind of fast forwarding from all the, like the, you know, the gritty details was, you know, we obviously found out that the, you know, the recce element, you know, sniper element, reconnaissance element got compromised and, you know, three didn't make it out. Uh, Mike Murphy being one of them, who was my, one of my bud's classmates, you know, good friend. Um, but Marcus made it out or, you know, eventually, you know, got rescued and then they flew him into Germany to like debrief and like repatriate. And, you know, it was like a whole process they go through and they said, Hey, like he needs to see some seals. Like he needs, he needs some team guys. Like right now he's, you know, like, yeah. So, um, I volunteered LPO volunteered and one other person on, and we, we went up to Ramstein and, you know, met with him. Um, he was with the psychologist at the time and, um, yeah, it was just good to like, you see him, you know, after that whole week of, you know, and I'm sure for him it was probably very, um, it was probably just like, I don't know, humbling is not the word, but, uh, it was just good for a soul, I think, to see some, some fresh faces, some team guys that he knew, um, after that happened, because I think, you know, he obviously went through everything he went through. And, uh, yeah, we just, we shot the shit with him for a couple hours. Um, I mean, he was like wounded head to toe. Um, I joke with him now. I was like, dude, you look like shit. <laughs> like you had, you know, like dried blood and cuts and just like his whole, you know, his arms and legs and face and neck and, you know, his legs were really bad. Um, but it was good to just, you know, talk to him. Yeah. And I don't remember much of the conversation, but I do remember sitting outside on the, we were sitting on a, um, like a wooden table, you know, and, and again, like, I didn't know how to, I don't know how to react. I don't know what to say. You know, what do, what do I say to this guy who literally just been through hell and back? Yeah. Um, just lost all his best friends. And I, what, what can I do? What can I say to, to help him right now? You know, I feel, I felt so bad for him. Um, you know, I just, I just didn't know what to do. So I was just there to be a, you know, a, a friend, a, 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 an ear that he can talk to and, you know, try my best to figure out what am I supposed to do in this situation? Cause I've never been here before. Yeah. You know, I never lost any friends and I never, um, I never seen what hurt was like. And, you know, I could tell that, you know, he was hurt 
And, you know, I know he won't get upset about me talking about this, you know, because this is real, right? This is what happened. And, um, you know, I hope, I hope he's good now, you know, that's all I pray for. Yeah. But, um, so we, we did, we did that. Um, you know, we hung out, um, and I believe he was going back to the States. If I, if, again, if my, my, my mind, my, my memory serves me correctly. We went back, uh, to Stuttgart and got our gear ready and deployed. And, uh, we had a, you know, we had a fill half a platoon because they just lost half a platoon. And, uh, we got there and I remember it was the middle of the night and, you know, my other, my, one of my best friends in the teams, um, Matty Roberts, he, uh, we, we got to the camp, we got off the, you know, we got off the flight, got on the ground, humvee over to the compound. I remember walking in and again, you know, we're getting chills talking about it. Like, again, I didn't know how to react. You know, here's a platoon that was there on the other helicopter, you know, watching like their buddies, you know, burn into the ground. And I was going to go see my best friend. And, and I remember seeing him in, in his room and, uh, you know, we just we just embraced and uh you know again um i just i just didn't know how to react you know i just felt like i had to be there for my brothers you know I had to be there for my buddies um and whatever it took to you know whatever it took to get through that situation like i was prepared to do that and i was prepared to to lend a hand and help and you know i was ready to fight right and then that's all that mattered and so it was good it was good to see him you know kind of embrace high five you know all right what are we doing here now and uh you know then you know you know then, then we got to work hey everybody i'm sean ryan click here to subscribe to the sean ryan show youtube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.